So back to tympanometry. The tympanic membrane vibrates most efficiently when the pressure on both sides of it are equal. So when the air pressure in your ear canal is the same as the air pressure in your middle ear space, then the tympanic membrane moves at its best. As the tympanic membrane is displaced from resting position by either a positive pressure or a negative pressure by the, put in through the ear canal by the pump, the vibratory efficiency of the membrane is decreased. So the purpose of tympanometry is to determine the point and the magnitude of greatest compliance or greatest ease of energy flow of the tympanic membrane. And if your tympanic membrane is healthy, that would be at zero decapascals at atmospheric pressure. So again, tympanometry is performed by putting 200 decapascals of pressure into the ear canal, measuring the compliance, then su successively measuring the compliance as the pressure is changed from 200 decapascals down to zero decapascals, and then to a negative 200 decapascals. The compliance measurement is recorded directly on a graph called the tympanogram. Compliance is on the y-axis and pressure is on the x-axis. It's categorized as A, A, S, A, D. We'll talk about these, but they are clinically subjective. So a type A is a curve seen in patients with normal middle ear function. The point of greatest compliance is at atmospheric pressure, zero decapascals, give or take 50 decapascals. And it's characterized by a large inverted V. An AS is similar to an A, but it's shallower. So think A, shallow. So the peak is not as high as it is with a normal type A. This is seen in patients who have um, a stiffer middle ear, or say fluid in their middle ear. AD is an A, but with a very large peak, so disarticulate. And this is for people that might have um, ossicular discontinuity or broken middle ear bones in the tympanic membrane is just moving too much. So here's an example of our A peak, which is normal, AS, which is stiff movement of the tympanic membrane, and AD, which would be too flaccid movement in the tympanic membrane. A type B is a flat tympanogram, and it's seen when the middle ear space is filled with fluid. There are wide variations in pressure in the external ear, um, to help you determine what's going on. The point, I'm sorry, let me say that again. So the wide variations of pressures in the external ear canal can't match the pressure in the fluid. So basically, you can't find the greatest point of compliance with the type B. The type B could be seen when there are small amounts of earwax or debris occluding or blocking one of the probes. In this case, the ear canal volume would show up like 0.3 or less. It'd be very little because the pump is kind of broken. Here's a type B. If the ear canal volume is point th between 0.3 and 3.0, then you know that there's nothing blocking it and that it's likely due to fluid in the middle ear. There's also a type C tympanogram when the pressure in the middle ear is negative. So the point of greatest compliance is found at a negative pressure not at the normal, uh, the normal atmospheric pressure. So when their point of greatest compliance is negative, it might be that the tympanic membrane is retracted. It could be that you have a cold and you're all stuffed up and you don't, you know, you, your ears feel full or different. That would be a type C tympanogram where the ear canal is contracted. And here's an example of a type C. So the great point of greatest admittance is at negative pressure, not at zero decapascals. Uh, the positive peak pressure is great when you get a tympanogram with a peak greater than 50 decapascals, so patients that are crying or blowing out their nose, this is usually short-lived. There's also multi-frequency tympanometry, which you'll learn about if you decide to become an audiologist, and that's done with different tone frequencies beyond just the 226 hertz. So we have the subjective classes. Um, subjective system for naming these tympanograms, but it's common and it's what's done.